Denzel Dumfries to Chelsea and could Tottenham be looking at another ex-Chelsea manager? Here is your daily transfer roundup. Let us start with Denzel Dumfries to Chelsea. Yesterday we spoke out about him potentially being linked with a move to Manchester United but as we're seeing in this transfer window anyone who is linked anywhere else Chelsea uh, seem to be sniffing around as well. Uh, they have submitted a bid uh, for the right back um, around about £35 million pounds. however Inter Milan are demanding their valuation uh, be around €55 million million euros for him which is around about 48 million pounds um that's according to reports in Italy. Of course, we know that Chelsea already completed the signing of Mudrick, stealing him uh, out of Arsenal's hands. That was at the weekend. Uh, they've also signed Badashile as well in this window. So they're doing their business. Um, they're focusing on bringing in a right-sided defender before the end of the January transfer window, um, according to all reports. Now, this will likely be cover for Rhys James because we know just how good he can be, but he has been kind of played with injuries uh, over the last kind of season, season and a half. Um, he did impress Dumfries at the World Cup for the Netherlands. He kind of burst onto the scene in 2018 in that World Cup as well. Um, people have kind of been talking about him and linking him ever since. Um, but is this where Chelsea need to be strengthening? Is, is this what they need to do in terms of having strength of depth and making sure they've got the right cover? As you know, as Pilaqueta, uh, he kind of does fill in that role, but we, we know he's coming towards the end of his time at Chelsea now. He's a little bit older. Um, and is this the type of player you want to be seeing linked with Chelsea, Chelsea fans? Let me know your thoughts on that. Just having a little look at him in terms of Syria, um, his average rating per game is around about a six. Um, and I assume he's going to be coming in as kind of cover for Reese James because you'd expect once Reese James comes back from those injuries that he will, of course, walk back into the side um, based on how good he has been for Chelsea. Um, but could he be good enough to kind of get in front of Reese James? Could he be the one to challenge him for that spot? What do you think, Chelsea fans? Uh, and of course, you've been very, very busy in this transfer window. I mean, you've signed... So many players in the last six months. You're, you know, I think you spent nearly five hundred million pounds, which is what Liverpool had spent in, I think, the last five ten years. Um, so you can't say that Todd Bowley has come here and not splashed the cash. He absolutely has done. But have you made the signings that you want to be seeing? Of course, you brought in Yao Felix as well. Uh, obviously, that debut didn't quite go to plan, but he will be an important part, I think, uh, for the rest of the season once he's back from that suspension. Um, where else do you think you need to strengthen? I know that midfield is somewhere that we've spoken about a lot. Is that something you do in this window or is this something you hold off on until the summer and see what options you have available? Um, let me know, Chelsea fans, what, what you think should be done. Um, and just want to have a quick chat on Graham Potter because obviously, Chelsea, you're coming off the back of that win against Palace. It was a 1-0 win, but it's getting you back on the right track. Um, have your feelings changed towards Graham Potter? Because I know some fans were calling for time. Some fans were saying that this is not right. Um, but I want to know what you think. Do you think he should be given time? He's definitely been giving the backing. He's definitely been giving money. There's no way that anyone could say that. Um, and I just want to know your perspective if it has moved at all um, since that win against Palace. Now, moving on, we're still kind of sticking with Chelsea, but ex-Chelsea. Uh, Thomas Tuchel is linked with a potential uh, managerial role at Tottenham. He's, of course, out of work after being sacked by Chelsea uh, last September. He's enjoying a break from football. Uh, and if it doesn't work out with Antonio Conte, if he doesn't sign a new contract, uh, which he is out of when the season ends, it is looking ever increasingly unlikely that Conte will, will be there past the end of this season if he manages to stay uh, for the next few months. Thomas Tuchel could be the one to replace him. Now, the issue is, as a Tottenham fan, this would be another Chelsea manager. And Daniel Levy has hired, I think, 11 or 12 managers in his tenure. And out of those, uh, Chelsea bosses include Glenn Hoddle, Andre Villas-Boas, Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte. So from my perspective, I'm not too thrilled about potentially having another Chelsea boss. Um, again, not that I think he's uh, maybe as abrupt as Chelsea and Conte are. But I do think that it's probably, again, not a great fit for this club. Um, he's not someone that I guess demands too much money, but he does need sufficient backing. Um, and again, we're seeing that, you know, Tottenham are unwilling to kind of move on their stance on various things um, with Conte, with Jose Mourinho, with Pochettino before that. Um, so again, I'm not entirely happy about the thought of this being linked. Um, of course, Maurizio Pochettino is currently out of a job. 
since leaving PSG, he will be a contender, obviously, for this role, um, should and when Conte's position at the club leaves. Um, for me, I've been very vocal about it. I would always prefer to have Pochettino back. He played the best football that I've seen in the last 10 years under all three, four managers, if we're counting Nuno as well, since he's left. Um, he has the ability to develop young talent, which is something Spurs have kind of stagnated on in bringing through anyone from their academy. Um, he plays the brand of football, which from a Tottenham perspective, what they class as their DNA fits very well. And they know how to work on a budget. So for me, it would be a no brainer. But at the same time, looking at a Daniel Levy perspective, he'd have to show a lot of humility to rehire Maurizio Pochettino almost four years after sacking him um, and kind of admit and hold his hands up and say, I was wrong. I probably shouldn't have done that. And knowing him, that means that we'll end up with Thomas Tuchel. And that's not to say that Thomas Tuchel isn't a very good manager. Of course, we know what he's achieved at Dortmund, what he's achieved at Chelsea, winning the Champions League as well. He's a fantastic manager. Um, but again, just from a, a Tottenham perspective, I'm not too sure about Tuchel. But I want to know your thoughts. Who do you think that Tottenham, if and when Antonio Conte leaves, they should go for? Do you think they should go for Thomas Tuchel or do you think they should go for Maurizio Pochettino and rehire him back at Tottenham Hotspur? Let me know your thoughts in the chat. Try not to be biased. Let's see what you think from an unbiased perspective. Uh, let's have a little look at what else is going on in the roundup. Now, West Ham are looking at making a move for Harry Maguire. Uh, that would be a loan move from Manchester United. Whether or not United will want to get rid of him um, when they are you know, kind of simmering on the cusp of a title challenge. Um, maybe for squad depth, they might not want to. But we know that West Ham are flailing in the bottom three. They are going to have a potential relegation fight on their hands. Um, and that could be someone that they're willing to bring in. Now, I want to know your thoughts on that. United fans, West Ham fans, all fans. Do you think that would be a good move for West Ham? Bringing in Harry Maguire. He has looked a little bit better. Uh, you know, he had a good World Cup with England. Um, and of course, when he has featured for Manchester United, he's come in and done his job. Um, and I think that that's, you know, potentially based on not having so much pressure on him as well. But does he need to kind of look to going to a new club and starting afresh? He's 29 years old. We've still got quite a few years to get out of him. Maybe he would be better at a club of West Ham where there's less pressure um, and less demands of him that they have at Manchester United. Um, of course, we know that Liverpool are still looking for midfielders. Again, this is something that comes all the time but it's realistically going to be done in the summer um, there are talks that he's uh, that they kind of blew their full transfer budget on Cody Gakpo because of course the owners are looking to kind of cash in um, and whether or not sell the club fully or sell part of it so they don't have to invest too much at the moment. I think that that's going to be a waiting game for the summer. We know that uh, that Liverpool are interested in Mateus Nunes. Uh, they've also been linked with Neves and of course Jude Bellingham, that name and that target never goes away from Liverpool. Um, Arsenal also, we mentioned it yesterday, they are in contact with Bayer Leverkusen in France uh, over Moussa Diaby. We're going to be monitoring that one. Uh, and of course uh, Leandro Trossard. Now he uh, he's not playing at the moment for De Zerbi and Brighton. They didn't seem to miss him on the weekend. There's been some attitude problems going on there. Um, of course, Tottenham are interested in him. They did put a bid in, but it was well below the valuation of £25 million. Arsenal are also keen on him and, of course, Chelsea. Because Arsenal are interested in him, Chelsea are also monitoring uh, the future of uh, Trossard as well. So keep your eyes peeled on that and let's see what happens. But that is everything for today's roundup. Keep your eyes peeled and we'll be back with more transfers soon.